This video is brought to you by Astronics Test Systems and the Freedom brand of Communication Systems Analyzers. The topic of this video is Cable Sweep, Characterizing Test Cables. What are the skills you can expect to gain from this presentation? Recognize the causes of signal attenuation and what factors can help minimize the RF power loss between the radio and test equipment. Calculate the theoretical loss of a cable and how the test results will be affected by this loss. Confidently utilize the cable sweep function to address and mitigate cable loss in RF measurements. How is this presentation structured? First, hear about a radio technician who uses his understanding of cable loss to maximize the accuracy of his radio test and alignment efforts. Next, discover how the design and materials used in RF transmission lines impact the performance of the cables, connectors, and adapters. Finally, understand the process of sweeping cables to determine their attenuation value across the RF spectrum. Could these skills help you save time and money? That's exactly what happened to Frank, who was a shop supervisor in his state government's radio shop. As troopers in their vehicles were upgraded to all band radios that operate from 150 to 800 megahertz, Frank noticed his technicians were struggling to ensure that cable losses were properly accounted for and tested. This was especially critical in trunk mounted vehicular radios when long test cables were needed to reach the test equipment. He had low confidence that the radios were properly aligned before returning to the field. Frank used his knowledge and experience with RF test cables to convey to his technicians the critical nature of properly compensating for cable loss when making power measurements, particularly when dealing with the new all-band radios. He trained them to use their test equipment to consistently sweep and document all test cables prior to use. In fact, in the course of his training, he identified two faulty cables which were currently in use in the shop. The cable sweep functionality of the test equipment in his shop now ensures accurate power measurements and prevents unnecessary troubleshooting by faulty cables. Frank is confident that he is able to provide reliable radio service to the law enforcement officers his shop serves. What is cable loss? And how big of an impact does it have on power measurements? Cable loss is a general term that encompasses all of the sources of RF energy lost between a device that generates a radio signal and a device that receives, measures, or radiates that signal. The measurement of cable loss is attenuation, which is expressed in decibels. It is a logarithmic ratio of the power into the transmission line versus the power out of the transmission line. RF power can be lost as heat in the materials that makes up the cable, or it can be leaked or radiated into space by escaping the cable. Radio signals are primarily transmitted using some form of coaxial cable where the signal travels through a center conductor and an outer conductive shell. There are many designs and materials used for various applications. Despite these variations, a set of common guiding principles apply. Attenuation increases with cable length. Attenuation increases with higher frequency. Attenuation increases as the amount of shielding decreases. Other guiding principles are a result of the mechanical design of the cable and material selection. Smaller diameter inner conductors increase attenuation by raising the electrical resistance of the line. Smaller cross-section cables increase attenuation by leaking energy between the conductors. The material used to separate the conductors contributes to this loss based on its dielectric constant or permittivity. Single, loosely braided outer conductors or shield cause higher attenuation by leaking the signal down the length of the cable. Keep in mind there is a category of cables designed specifically 
to radiate along its entire length to provide radio coverage in tunnels and buildings. This is not a good cable to use as a test cable. Radiated loss can be improved by designing the cable with double shielding, tighter braiding of stranded conductors, or a solid outer conductor. However, the trade-off is the increased stiffness of the cable, which may not be suitable for test purposes. It is important to remember that attenuation can also be caused by connectors and adapters used in the transmission line. Poor quality or damaged components can add significant attenuation. Some types of connectors are not designed for use at higher frequencies. Finally, even though a cable's design and material selection provide a theoretical attenuation level, in practice, the actual attenuation may differ greatly as a result of defects or damage. Coaxial cables have a minimum bend radius, which increases with the size and stiffness of the cable. Bending the cable beyond this limit will permanently damage the cable and add loss. Cables can also be mechanically damaged by cutting, pinching, and twisting. Cables exposed to harsh atmospheric conditions can be damaged by humidity, rain, heat, or sunlight. To demonstrate these principles, consider the following chart showing commonly used cables and cable types for testing equipment in the two-way radio industry. Attenuation is typically specified as dB per 100 feet or meters. It is given as a function of operating frequency. In this table, the cables increase in physical size from left to right, which results in lower attenuation and higher maximum power capacity. Using the cable manufacturer's data sheet, it is possible to calculate the theoretical attenuation for a given length of a specific cable. We will use the highlighted versions for RG58 to calculate attenuation at 150 and 800 megahertz in the following example. At 150 megahertz, the average cable loss is between 100 and 200 megahertz, so we average the two losses, 4.9 and 7.3. This is 6.1 dB loss per 100 feet, or 0.061 dB per foot. At 800 megahertz, we average 16.9 and 20.1 which leads us to 18.5 dB of loss per 100 feet, or 0.185 dB per foot. What impact does this have on a 6-foot cable? This 6-foot cable attenuates our signal by half a dB at 150 MHz and 1.2 dB at 800 MHz. When connected between the radio and test equipment, a 30-watt radio will measure 27 watts at 150 megahertz and 23 watts at 800 megahertz. If we align the radio to measure 30 watts at the service monitor, the radio's actual output will actually be 34 watts at 150 megahertz and almost 40 watts at 800 megahertz. This is probably outside the manufacturer's specifications for the radio and could significantly reduce the lifespan of the radio's power amplifier. The radio may not even be capable of that power level, leading to the false conclusion that the radio is faulty. Take a minute to let the magnitude of this error sink in. A more subtle consequence of cable loss comes when trying to measure the sensitivity of the radio's receiver. The weak signal generated by the test equipment is attenuated before it reaches the radio. The radio will appear to be less sensitive than it really is. In this example, the sensitivity will appear worse by 1.2 dB at 800 MHz, which is equivalent to half of a microvolt. Again, this may lead to an incorrect diagnosis of a sensitivity problem that is only caused by cable loss. Once the true impact of cable loss is understood, the need to compensate for it becomes very clear. How can cable loss be mitigated? Based on the knowledge of factors that influence cable loss, one can try to minimize it down to a level that feels safe to ignore. Can you get away with it? Sometimes. Is it good practice? Never. Will it get you into trouble? Sooner rather than later. 
What about calculating the loss from the data sheet and adjusting the reading mentally? That's better, but error prone when switching bands. What about putting an RF level offset in the test instrument? That does eliminate having to remember to compensate, but still has to be changed when switching bands. And when using an automated test and alignment feature, it won't allow the offset to change with the frequency band on multiband radios. More problematic, cable damage will not be detected. The best option is to use the cable sweep functionality of the Freedom R8000 family communication systems analyzers to characterize test cables and compensate for cable loss. This hands-on portion of the presentation provides an overview of the cable sweep functionality and step-by-step -step instructions to get the most from this powerful feature. As of firmware version 3.8, all products in this family have an automated full sweep capability with the ability to store and retrieve multiple test cable profiles. This is in addition to the existing two-point manual sweep that existed in previous versions. Keep in mind that cable sweep operates in parallel or cumulatively with the RF level offset setting. Remember that firmware upgrades are always free of charge, so this improved feature is available simply by upgrading to version 3.8. If you are not familiar with the user interface of these instruments, follow along with these instructions. You may also want to watch one of our introductory videos on the basics of this technician-friendly user interface. Product users invariably tell us the R8000 family of products is easy to learn, easy to use, designed around the way that I think, and it helps me get my job done faster. Cable Sweep is a system setting and is accessed by pressing the blue Settings button and selecting System Settings from the vertical Soft Key buttons. The status of the Cable Sweep settings is visible in the list of settings. The Enabled or Disabled state is shown as well as a selected Cable Sweep file. To access the Cable Sweep menu, navigate the vertical Soft Key menu by pressing the More key twice and select the soft key labeled Cable Sweep Table. This is the main menu for the Cable Sweep feature. Select an existing sweep file and enable the feature, or choose to create a new two-point or multi-point sweep. A manual two-point sweep is a simple way to create a sweep using only two attenuation values, such as those calculated from the cable's data sheet. Enter an attenuation value for 100 MHz and 1 GHz. Power measurements will be adjusted by a factor interpolated between these two values as a function of the frequency. A multipoint sweep steps the user through a short procedure to calibrate the RF path and sweep the cable under test. This process uses the tracking generator functionality of the equipment to measure attenuation as a function of frequency. The instrument will sweep from 30 MHz to 1 GHz and capture the cable loss data. This is a two-step process and requires several RF components in addition to the test cable. First, a 6 dB pad or attenuator is attached to the RF Gen Out port to minimize the impact of impedance mismatches across the full spectrum. Next, a reference cable is connected from the pad to the RF in out port. An RF adapter may be needed to make this connection. At this point, the instrument will sweep the reference cable to characterize the RF path. The second step requires a user to insert the cable under test or test cable to be used to test the radios between the reference cable and the RF in and out port. Another RF adapter may be needed to accomplish this. This adapter slightly affects the sweep so having a reference cable that connects directly to the cable under test will slightly improve sweep accuracy. Once the test cable has been swept, the user is prompted to save the data or choose to discard it. Once the data is saved, it is displayed on a chart. This provides the user with an indication of the cable's performance. If this data does not match the manufacturer's data sheet, the cable may be damaged and should be discarded and replaced. 
sweeping a cable several times after moving it around can help identify intermittent cable problems. Cable sweep files can be exported to an external USB drive and imported from the drive. How can you tell at a glance that your cable sweep feature is enabled and being applied to the power measurements and generate output level? After pressing the escape key twice to return to the main screen, the RF zone display will indicate that the cable sweep or RF level offset is enabled by highlighting the label of the affected fields. In this case, the input level or watt meter reading and the generate modes output level. Auto-Tune is an automated radio test and alignment option that allows technicians to perform the radio manufacturer's test and alignment procedures automatically. The radio is connected to and controlled by the instrument, and a test report is provided at the conclusion of the process showing the test results and how much the radio has been adjusted. Enabling cable sweep in the system settings will compensate for cable loss in Auto-Tune. But for the convenience of Autotune users, cable sweeps can also be selected and enabled from inside Autotune's Preferences menu, which is accessed from the vertical soft keys under Tools. What is the most important information to remember about this presentation? Most importantly, the radio technician must understand and address cable loss in order to make accurate power measurements. The ability to sweep, manage, and verify test cables saves time and wasted troubleshooting. It also provides peace of mind and consistent power measurement accuracy. The Freedom R8000 family of communications system analyzers is easy to learn, easy to use, provides all the data at a glance, and does this all in a small, lightweight instrument that is capable of addressing all your radio test requirements. And with free firmware upgrades, it just keeps getting better. For additional information and step-by-step -step instructions, please find the following app note titled Utilizing Cable Sweep on the Freedom Communication System Analyzer in our document library on the Freedom website. Please check our website for product information such as data sheets, brochures, operators manuals, users guides, application notes, and other videos. Contact information for our sales and application engineers is on the support page. To schedule a product demonstration or obtain pricing information, contact your local U.S. manufacturer's representative or international distributor. You can also connect with us through our social media channels. On behalf of the Freedom Team at Astronics Test Systems, we trust you have found this presentation useful and hope you will reach out to us and let us show you how our expertise, experience, and products can save you time and money as you endeavor to keep the communications flowing on your radio system. Thank you for watching.